Hi, I hope you had a great weekend. <clears throat> Today I want to talk about the importance of a vitamin. A lot of us, maybe one in four people that we see every day has a deficiency of vitamin B12. Now, a lot of us may not feel the impact of this deficiency right now, but over the next couple of years, the cumulative buildup of this deficiency of B12 is linked to innumerable problems. Number one, from the lack of red blood cells, to fatigue, to the sensation of pins and needles under the feet, to blurred vision, to your gut health, one deficiency of a vitamin can lead to innumerable problems. And in today's world, we, all, we look at different problems separately. Instead of looking at the human body and human health in a holistic angle, if someone comes with a problem of fatigue, we look at only that problem. If someone comes with a problem of a sensation of pins and needles under their feet and in their fingers, we look at only that problem. If someone comes with an inflamed tongue or blurred vision, we look at that problem from one spectacle never realizing that everything in the human body and the human mind is connected with each other and it needs a holistic approach. Sometimes just a deficiency of a vitamin, vitamin B12, which is a water-soluble vitamin, also known as cobalamin. What happens is this deficiency of a vitamin we need to understand is so important for our health, not right now, but in our future. When we look at India today, we look at the rise of dementia. We look at the rise of Alzheimer's and we wonder what's happening. A couple of years ago, dementia, Alzheimer's were unheard of. Very few people had it. And today it's increasing and it has its link with a lot of lifestyle issues and also the deficiency of B12. So let's understand exactly how B12 works in the body. And today we're gonna to break a couple of myths. Like there is this whole myth that vegans and vegetarians will be deficient in B12. I believe this to be a marketing lie, just to push people to buy more vitamin B12 supplements. Because when I look at my non-vegetarian non -vegetarian clients, they also have deficiencies of B12. And vegans and vegetarians also have deficiencies in B12. I'm yet to see more deficiencies of vitamin B12 in vegetarians and in people with uh, people who are vegans alone. Vitamin B12, what happens in vitamin B12, we need to understand it's connected with a very important function, the production of DNA that makes our red blood cells. Now, red blood cells has the job of transporting oxygen from the air that we breathe to trillions of cells in the human body. So if we have lesser number of red blood cells, we have lesser amount of oxygen reaching these trillion cells. And we feel fatigued, we feel tired. Our brain doesn't get the right amount of oxygen that it needs for survival. So you see, the production of DNA results in the production of red blood cells. Now, now many people suffer from anemia or a condition called megaloblastic anemia. What happens over here is we don't have the right amount of red blood cells. There are red blood cells which are produced in the, red, in the bone marrow. These red blood cells are very large and fragile. Because they're large, they cannot leave the bone marrow and enter the blood, which means our blood has less red blood cells. These fragile red blood cells in the bone break down and produce a substance called bilirubin. So sometimes when we look at our blood reports and we see high bilirubin levels, we can sometimes link it to low vitamin B12 levels because we have the lack of B12, we don't produce the right amount of red blood cells. Now who suffers from low B12 basically? You can find this in the elderly people whose guts are compromised. You can find it in people who have gone through surgery where a part of their gut is removed. You can find it in people who are on this diabetic drug called metformin, because when you're on metformin, you automatically have a deficiency of B12. And you can find it in people who have a long history of popping antacids all the time, because we know antacids mess up the stomach acid, which is important for the uh, synthesis of vitamin B12. People who smoke a lot, people who drink a lot, and people who are on a lot of medication, this can deplete and compromise the synthesis of B12 as well. My belief is that B12, we all get enough of B12, whether you're non-vegetarian, whether you're vegetarian, whether you're vegan. We need a little bit of B12 in the system. What happens is most of us lack something called the intrinsic factor. The intrinsic factor is a mucoprotein enzyme that is produced in the gastric juices that our stomach produces. Now you need a little bit of B12 to bind with this mucoprotein, which is called your intrinsic factor. 
This binds with the B12 and takes it to the gut. And it is in the gut that the B12 gets synthesized. So most people who have low vitamin B12 levels have the wrong gut ecology. Their gut health is compromised. You see, there are a lot of us living today with the wrong stomach acid. A lot of us are producing the wrong stomach acid in our system. And because of that, we have the wrong intrinsic factor. It is this intrinsic factor in your gut, in your stomach, that is required to synthesize B12. We all get enough of B12, but then there's a whole supplement market that has to keep pushing B12 supplementation. So they tell vegans and vegetarians, hey, you don't get B12 in animals, you don't eat animals, you don't have dairy, so you're gonna lack B12, so to pop a supplement. But like I said, we see even non-vegetarians who are meat eaters and dairy consumers who have a lack of B12 in their system. So technically you need the intrinsic factor and you need a trace mineral called cobalt. That's where vitamin B12 gets its scientific name, cobalamine. Cobalt is a trace mineral that is found in your gut. You find this in foods like nuts, seeds, dry fruits, good oils, good oils like cold pressed oils, coconut oil, olive oil, butter, rice. You find cobalt in small traces. If your gut has the right amount of cobalt in, in then the B12, the bacteria in your gut, combines with the cobalt to synthesize B12. You see, it's not about the quantity of B12 that you take. It's about how your body assimilates and absorbs. All B12 absorption happens in your gut lining. So your intestinal lining, if that is healthy, if you have the right lining, you are able to assimilate and synthesize B12. But most of us today have the problem in our gut. We have acidity, we have bloating, we have uh, flatulence, excessive flatulence, we have belching problems, and these are all symptoms that our gut and stomach isn't working the right way. So no matter how much of B12 you take, it is not about the quantity. You'll see that your levels are low, your doctor prescribes B12, your levels shoot up for a while, you take injections of B12, and within six months, your levels have fallen again because it is not about the quantity of B12, it is about your gut health. If you wanna maintain the right amount of B12 in your system, you gotta maintain your gut health. Anyway, let's talk about the deficiencies more in detail because we need to understand how important B12 is for your health. A lot of people sleep well, they eat well, but yet they feel tired and fatigued throughout the day. You gotta check your B12 levels because again, B12, if you have low B12, you don't have the right amount of red blood cells. You don't have the right amount of red blood cells. You're unable to carry oxygen from the air that you breathe to trillions of cells. And that's what powers energy in the human body. Sometimes we're fatigued because we don't have the right amount of oxygen reaching our brain. And people who do yoga, people who do pranayama, people who do headstands will realize this. You get this sudden rush of energy because we have this sudden rush of oxygen to trillions of cells in the human body. So sometimes instead of reaching out for more caffeine, more Red Bulls, more stimulants like sugar, we have to look at a simple deficiency of B12. Okay, because B12 means more energy and more oxygen to your body. A lot of people suffer from the sensations of pins and needles under their feet and in their thumbs and in their hands. And they link this with more complicated diseases. Now what happens is B12 is a contributor to the metabolic pathway of something called myelin. Myelin is a fatty substance that coats our nerves. Think of a wire, a wire is insulated. If a wire isn't insulated and it touches another wire, there's something that happens. There'll be sparks, there'll be a short circuit, and there's a problem that occurs. So that, that's why electrical wires are insulated. It's the same way our nerves are constantly, constantly working on electrical communication between every cell and every nerve in the human body. The insulation for these nerves is something called myelin. Myelin is a fatty substance that requires B12. B12 is required, which is why in patients with multiple sclerosis, where we find the myelin sheet is degenerating, we find a deficiency of B12 as well, which is why B12 plays such an important role in the patient's history of multiple sclerosis. So what happens over time, this insulation of myelin gets lesser and lesser because it doesn't have what it needs to be produced, which is vitamin B12. And you can find every link with dementia, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, memory loss, brain fatigue, brain fog, and all of these issues in the body because we lack one important 
you know, vitamin B12. So that sensation, sometimes it's linked to diabetes, but in most cases it's linked with a lack of B12. So you get these sudden pains or these sudden nerve pinches, you know that your myelin is less and you know that your B12 is less. So get your B12 levels checked, check your gut health and fix that immediately. In the elderly people, we see a change in mobility. You find that certain people lose their balance and they tend to fall very easily. Again, don't blame it on old age. Look at vitamin B12 levels because B12 is also responsible for the coordination of mobility in the human body. So you see everything that's happening in the brain is neurological. There is electricity happening in the human brain. You either have the right wiring or you have the wrong wiring. To have the right wiring, you need the right insulation, which is myelin again. Then you have something called glossitis or mouth ulcers. A lot of people constantly get these mouth ulcers or their tongues get inflamed all of the time. You know, so again, you gotta look at vitamin B12 because it leads to that. Breathlessness and dizziness. Okay, we blame it on sugar levels all the time. We blame it on pressure. But again, look at your B12 levels. If you constantly get dizzy or you're constantly breathless, okay, what happens again? Your red blood cells, are lesser in number, so they're unable to carry oxygen. If we don't have the right amount of oxygen reaching our brain or our body, we get breathless or we get dizzy. So you wanna check your B12 levels again. Blurred vision doesn't mean you have to run for a pair of spectacles all the time. Sometimes blurred vision is linked to low B12 because B12 is responsible for the health of your optic nerves. Again, B12 nerves, B12 nerves. So if your optic nerves are not functioning the right way and you have blurred vision, you can also look at your B12 levels rather than just looking at the requirement of having spectacles. Sometimes all you need to do is fix that deficiency and your eyesight gets better. And again, mood changes. So many people today go through mood changes. So they blame it on stress. They blame it on their bosses, colleagues, relationships, lack of sleep and all of these things. Sometimes all you do is all you need is the right amount of B12 in the human body because B12 is related to depression as well. Again, neurological. When we feel depressed in our mind, sometimes a small problem can be magnified and it appears to be very big. And we blame it on that problem, but we have a deficiency of B12, which is not allowing our neurological health to work the right way. So before we blame it on depression and label a condition that we're going through with a label like depression, because the moment you label something, it has a psychosomatic effect on the human body and on the human mind. We react to the label of a disease. So sometimes depression or feeling low or tired or feeling sad can be linked to a deficiency of B12. Now, when you do your medical report, you can check for B12, but I always tell people to check for homocysteine because homocysteine is an inflammatory marker, but it also tells you whether you have a deficiency of folic acid and B12 in the human body. Folic acid and B12 work together in the human body. So when you have elevated levels of homocysteine, your body's trying to tell you that it also has a deficiency of folic acid and B12. Sometimes the best way to bring down homocysteine is by improving your B12 and your folic acid in the human body. So again, stop looking for foods that are rich in B12. Very, very few foods have it. And it's not about getting B12 from foods. It's, a, it's about improving the health of your stomach and your gut. If you're producing the right amount of stomach acid, you see, everyone's trying to be alkaline today. The stomach has to be acidic. You need to keep a range of 1.5 to 3 on the pH scale. That's highly acidic in the stomach. So every time we get over acidic because we're overeating, we're having too much of sugar, we're keeping long gaps between our meals, we pop antacids. Antacid stops the stomach from producing acid. You don't have the right amount of acid, you don't produce intrinsic factor. You don't have intrinsic factor, you cannot bind on to B12 in the human body. And then you come down to the gut. Most of us have damaged guts today because of overeating, stress, poor lifestyle, excessive drinking, smoking, lack of sleep, hormonal imbalance. So even if we have B12 going into our system because we're popping some vegan B12 supplements, it's not about what you pop, it's about is your gut intestinal lining able to absorb the B12 that you're consuming? So you see, the human body has to have the right ecology, has to have the right environment. When your stomach has the right environment, your B12 will be 
bound correctly. When your gut has the right ecology or environment, the B12 will be synthesized and absorbed the right way. So we got to break away from this marketing lie that we need more supplements. We need more foods that have B12. We need the right ecology that can handle a little bit of vitamins. Go back 10 to 20 years. B12 supplements were unheard of. People were vegetarian, didn't have B12 deficiencies because we got a little bit of it from our food, but we had good gut health and we had good stomach health. And the third thing is we become too clean. We constantly use, you know, all of these hand washes and we're constantly too clean. Sometimes we need dirt because I believe that B12 is a bacteria. And B12 is a bacteria, it gets synthesized with the good bacteria in our gut and absorbed into our system. So before in the past, we would pluck out vegetables, we would eat it, there would be a little bit of mud that gets into our system. We need a little bit of good dirt in our systems. We hardly play with mud, we're hardly exposed to mud that has the bacteria, the microbes, the organisms that can synthesize and make the right amount of B12 in our system. So when we get too clean, because we live in this paranoid world of constantly, you know, uh, uh, sanitizing our hands and then we have antibiotics that we take. We take antibiotics, we flush out our good bacteria, we flush out B vitamins, which is why it is so important that when you're prescribed an antibiotic, you should take a B complex, which is a B vitamin, and you should take a probiotic to repopulate your gut bacteria. And that's how you improve your gut. A, a damaged gut will not be able to absorb B12 the right way, no matter how much you take. So when you've gone through sickness and medication, it is so important for you to repair your gut lining, to repopulate your microbiome. And when you have all of this working well, the intelligence of your system synthesizes just exactly the right amount of B12 that your body requires. So please note, if you have parents who are old, if you know the elderly, yourself, your children, everyone, you know, we need to make sure that we have the right amount of vitamins in our body and then everything else works better. Sometimes the most complicated disease can be managed by just populating the right amount of vitamins and minerals in the human body. Have a great day, everyone. Until next time, eat smart, move more, sleep right, and breathe deep. If you have a deficiency, you want to speak to your doctor, you want to speak to your GP and get that B12 fixed. But like I said, don't depend on just supplementation. You want to work on cleaning your gut. You want to work on your stomach health. How do you know you have bad stomach health and bad gut health? If you constantly belch after meals, if you have flatulence, excessive flatulence that's smelly, if you have bloating, if you have acidity, you have an irregular bowel system, you're constipated, you have too many loose motions in a day, these are all symptoms of your body telling you, hey, something's wrong with my gut, something's wrong with my stomach. You fix that and you fix a major problem in the human body. Have a great day, everyone.